Hi, today I will show you how I have made this multimedia knob. Warning, this project requires some skills and understanding of electronics. I do not take responsibility of any damage, injuries, whatever that can happen while trying to recreate actions taken in this video. I am what you can call an expert. Kinda. This project is inspired by Nicolas Zuza and his media control volume knob. First change I made is that I used DigiSpark instead of Arduino Pro Micro. It is about one dollar cheaper and will work as good. Also I changed the enclosure design, so it will be even bigger and I mean like stupid big. It took me four iterations to create this button design. The first three version was all about getting the dimension right so the electronics and covers fit nicely. The last change was to make the lower core higher. In this way I minimize the wobble. As you can see here, it wobbles a lot and with higher lower cover not so much. As you can see there are two or three different pieces. The bottom where the electronics are and the top switch I will cover which you can press fit on the encoder. For the top part you can choose from three types. Smooth one, knurled one and with vertical cutouts. I fitted mine with white and silver PLA using my original Prusa Mark 3S. After connecting the encoder and DigiSpark, I just uploaded the code from Mikolas using Arduino IDE. But unfortunately, it did not work. So I've searched the internet and found a few sample codes for DigiSpark and encoder, but haven't found a code that works with my electronic setup. Basically, the code to write is not complicated, so I've decided to check how encoders work and write my own code. Because knowledge is power and after reading about full and half-step encoders, gray code and other useful stuff, I was able to write the working code. To keep things simple and show you what's going on, I simply connected two green LEDs to the A and B encoder outputs and red LED to switch out. As you can see, after pressing the knob, the red LED goes on. When slowly rotate the encoder, the green LED goes with this pattern 00, 01, 11, 10, 00. And when rotating opposite direction, with this pattern 00, 10, 11, 01, 00. This is exactly how half step encoder should work. Okay, now I know how my encoder works, so it's just a matter of checking the A and B input states and compare it with previous states. There are five possible state changes which are detected. Pushing the button, rotating the knob left or right, and rotating the knob with button pressed. By default, pressing the knob is a play pause button, rotating changes the volume, and rotating the knob with button pressed changes the track. You can modify the left, right, and click functions to suit your needs. After testing the code and playing around with the slip values, the software site is ready. Time for assembly. You will need wires, wire cutters, diggy spark encoder, soldering iron, something to the solder pins from encoder, hot glue, a file, 3D printed parts, USB cable. First prepare the wires, cut 5 pieces to about 2.5 cm, which is 1 inch about length, and cover the end with solder. The solder the pins from the encoder. Run over the edges of DigiSpark with a file, but be careful not to damage the USB socket.
Now connect the encoder with the biggest spark. In my case, I'm using black wire for GND, red for 5 volts. These are really important, so be sure to connect them properly. The next three wires are blue for switch, green and yellow for encoder A and B outputs. These are not super important, you can always change them in the software. In any case, here is the schematic if you need one. Next, place the encoder and the digi spark in the bottom cover. Use hot glue to secure them in place. The final step of assembling the hardware is to put the upper cover, but you might want to wait with it until uploading the program to digi spark and verifying that everything works. Uploading the code is easy, but first you need to follow the instructions from DigiSpark on how to add it to Arduino IDE if you haven't already. Link in the description. After installing, all what's left is to hit the upload button and plug the DigiSpark using a USB cable. After a while, the multimedia knob is ready to use. For checking if it works, press the knob and check if it plays pause the music. Then rotate the knob and check if the volume changes. If you need to swap the rotation direction, just change pin encoder A and pin encoder B. It is a good idea to add something non-slippery to the bottom so you can rotate the knob easily. Pure PLA just slides way too easy on the desk surface. Maybe in the future I will try to make a smaller multimedia controller and or wireless one. Feel free to comment on what kind of improvements and modification you'd like to see. In the meantime, you can watch my other cool videos that are right here waiting for you. After reaching 100 subscribers, I will give away free multimedia knobs to free lucky people. Be sure to subscribe and you won't miss the giveaway video.